What's up, Carp Freaks, and welcome back to Carp Life. Now, it probably looks like I'm sat in my front room right now, but I'm not. I'm actually at Nuddock Wood Lake and Lodges. And how's what that for a, a view out of your front room? Absolutely amazing. Well, I didn't actually get down here until late yesterday afternoon and I didn't get the rods out until, until dark. And it was only actually a couple of days ago, this lake was frozen solid after that mini ice age that we had. But it's warming up nicely now. Hopefully the fish are moving around a bit more. And with a bit of luck, we might even be able to put a fish on the bank. While we're waiting for that to happen, I've got loads to tell you about this month. There's also a free to enter competition and Mrs. Pictures and I have a really big announcement. So make sure you're watching till the end of this video to find out more. Well, right back at the start of 2022, I saw a post on social media that really caught my eye. It was a catch report from a lake in France called Etang de Deux Pierre. And this catch report was just outrageous. Just the, the sheer number of big fish was insane. And I immediately contacted the fishery and spoke to Graham. And I was very, very lucky to be able to book a place at the end of November, a prime big fish week. And ever since I made that booking, that's all I could think about. That and obviously the wedding that I had, but I was absolutely pumped for this. I'd been counting down the days to this session and finally the day come and I headed there with my wife Judith and my business partner, Jamie. Judith and I decided to split the drive up and we headed over there one day earlier. We stayed in a really nice little village, just a short drive from the lake. We stayed in a, a nice hotel and that evening we had an absolutely incredible meal. The next day we went to the, the bakery and bought some pastries and then we just had the, the short drive to the lake on the morning. Jamie, on the other hand, decided to do it in one go the night before, and he arrived there having had no sleep at all. For me, that's not the way. I want to get there feeling pumped, ready to go, right from the start, and with a belly full of croissants, I was absolutely raring to go. Now, at Etang de Dupierre, you can book the whole lake exclusive and with just myself, Judith and Jamie there, we had a lot of water and a lot of swims to choose from. Well, Jamie called first dibs on a swim known as the beach, whereas I actually preferred to be at the other end of the lake. There seemed to be a lot more weed in this area. And at that time of year, when the weed is dying back, I just felt the fish would be held up in the thickest part of the weed and this gave me lots of options to be able to control this weedy section of water. So I was really happy with the area that I was in. But what I wanted to do first of all was get afloat, get in the boat and actually see the weed and the lake from a different perspective. Now, once I was afloat, I was able to see the, the true extent of the weed. And yes, it was weedy, but there was also lots of clear areas and, and small channels between the weed beds where I could present a bait. Well, I'm just out in the boat, having a scout around. There is quite a lot of weed down there. And it's right up to the surface. You can see here. Pretty weedy. Now the lake itself is only a shallow lake and I had around four or five feet of water in front of me and while I was just drifting with the boat I was seeing lots of cloudy areas there so it was clear there was a lot of fish in the area but I wasn't able to actually see any fish itself I was just seeing patches of cloudy water. 
So I was soon able to find three nice clear spots in amongst the weed close to this coloured water and with three hinge stiff rigs in position with carp rigs pop-ups and a nice big helping of crumb boilies over the top, the traps were set in time for dusk. Now Judith would also be fishing on this session and we could have fished with three rods each but because the lake was so shallow I just felt like that would be overkill and we'll put too much pressure in this one area and the fish could potentially move out. Uh, now Judith decided she only wanted to fish with one rod so we fished with four rods between us and earlier that day when we arrived Dave the bailiff had told us stories about the big common that likes to get caught from the island. So Judith said that's it that's my spot I want to fish close to the island and hopefully catch that big common. At night, I hardly got any sleep at all. The anticipation was almost unbearable. I was listening to what were clearly really big fish lumping out in the area. They sounded pretty close to where the, the rods were positioned, but that morning when I woke up, nothing had happened at all. And by the middle of the next day, almost 24 hours, into the session when still nothing had happened I couldn't help but feel like something was wrong so I went back in the boat and got afloat and I could see my my rigs in position the bait hadn't been touched at all but while I was drifting out in the boat I was seeing big clouds of mud coming up where I was I was spooking fish I wasn't using the outboard I was just gently drifting I was getting nowhere near these fish, they were spooking long before I was getting anywhere near them. So they were clearly quite spooky fish. And the fact that the bait I presented in, the, in these clear spots hadn't been touched kind of told me that those fish didn't want to come out of the weed. They were happy being in the thick of the weed. So I'd already made a, a mental note of where the weed was. And basically, if you could see the weed on the surface, that was the thicker part of the weed. And then if there wasn't weed on the surface close to it, there was still weed there, but it was presentable. I could get a rig in there and fish, fish it well. So I came back ashore. I decided never to use the boat again, unless I absolutely had to. I didn't want to spook the fish. And I instead switched over to using the bait boat. And I would send the boat out to where I could see the weed on the surface and then drop it just a little, a little way offside. And I felt the fish were just happier feeding in those weedy areas and they just weren't venturing out onto those clear areas. And by changing this tactic, it brought about an almost immediate result. I'm not gonna lie, since we've been here, it's been pretty stressful. I felt like I've been angling at my worst Nothing's really gone right so far. And I've had a complete change of tactics. And this rod has been in the water two minutes after a change of tactics, two minutes, and I'm playing a fish. So yeah, it's always good when uh, something happens after a, a bit of a change around. What other rods? How have you picked up that rod? Now playing a fish on a new water is always a little bit nerve-wracking but when that water's gin clear and you can see that you are attached to a lump it really does make your legs turn to jelly. A bit more nerve-wracking that first fish from a from a venue that first fish from a session you always want to see that first one go in the net I mean you want to see everyone go in the net but that first one it seems to mean a lot more The relief of seeing that fish go in the net and finally get up and running was absolutely incredible. While I was playing that fish, one of the other rods, the alarm was, was beeping and I had picked up the line at some point and thought that's all it was, just the, the line resettling. But as it continued to beep, I thought, I probably need to investigate this a bit further. And 
as it turns out, I'd had a double take. Well, while I was playing that fish, which I've only just netted, the other rod was beeping quite a lot, but I had picked up the line while I was playing that fish. So I didn't really think too much of it. But after the fish went in the net, this rod was still beeping and it turns out I've had a double take. <laughs> That's crazy. After such a frustrating start to the session where I felt like nothing was going right, to get a double take, wow, that's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely crazy. That's another nice fish. That's another really nice fish. Come on, come on. Oh, look at that. Oh, that weed's horrible. Get off the line. Get off the line. It's creating a lot of slack between me and the fish. There he is. Look at that. Look amazing in that clear water when you see them twisting and turning. And I'm able to land that and the fish, come on. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Get in, yes! <laughs> so, a double take. Look at that. Look at the size of that one. And, and that as a double take. That is ridiculous. Okay. So any guesses? That one. Mid fifties. Mid fifties, okay. <laughs> This is pictures. Are you ready? Oh, can someone help me for the thing on the thing? <laughs> well, this was the first part of that double take. Lovely clean mirror. 52 pounds, 11 ounces. And I would have been very happy with just that fish alone. But to brace it with a 60, wow, blown away. <laughs> there we go. Slip it back. Oh, that's amazing. My arms are really aching. I haven't been to the gym in a while. I feel like I've had a proper workout there. I need a brew now. Just wait the first fish, that mirror, 51 pound 14. I do think this common is bigger though. So, let's have a look. <coughs> what are you doing? <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. 65. 11. 65 pound, 11 ounces. <laughs> what? Oh, oh we're getting away from that. Just remind me. That's a PB <laughs> by quite some. 65, 11. Oh, yes. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow. Right. Well, what a way to start the session. A 51 mirror, a 65 common. I mean, my trip was already made. I didn't care if I didn't catch another fish after that. Right, have a look at this. My brand new PB. Oh, 65 pound, 11 ounces. Oh, what an absolute beast of a fish that is. Oh, I didn't even know you were on the end. I thought I was just reeling into a weed bed. Look at that though. Have one more lift. Have a look. Look at that. Absolute brute of a cow. <laughs> well, one last look before we slip him back. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, what an absolute beast. <laughs> oh, off you go, big girl. After slipping back that brace of fish and getting the rods back out, 
It was literally just a matter of minutes before I was in again. So I've literally just got the rod back out after slipping back those two fish. And I was just tying up another rig to redo the second rod. Didn't even get a chance. This rod is away. Been in the water five minutes. That's it. <laughs> Crazy. It's just got dark. And a short while ago, I landed that 46 pound one ounce. What an amazing day today. 46, a 51, a 64. <sighs> what a start. Well, changing the rods from fishing on the clear areas to fishing in the areas of, of lighter weed proved to be absolutely pivotal because no sooner had I slipped back that 46 pounder and I was in again. Well, it's literally been 15 minutes, I think, something like that, since I slipped back that 46 pounder. Playing another fish. <laughs> Crazy day. Got him. It's another absolute chunk as well. Now, no sooner had that fish gone in the net when this happened. Oh, other rods away. <laughs> oh, can you hold that net and the phone and the light and everything? <laughs> okay. You still recording? I mean, how crazy is that? That was the second double take of the day. This time with a 47 and a 62. Just mind blowing. Well, this is absolute carnage. In that retainer is a 62 that we're just about to photograph, having already photographed and slipped back a 47. Just as I lifted that fish up to do the photos, another, well, the final remaining rod rattled off. That's now in that retainer about to have its photos done and that is 46.4. So the smallest fish I've landed out of the six fish today is 46.1. Absolutely mental. Oh, 62 pound, I forget, 62 something, but he wants to go. So there you go, big boy. Whew. My arms are killing me. That second night was concluded with one more fish, uh, another chunk, 46 pound plus. I mean, with what I'd caught so far, I would have been happy with for the week, let alone in what was literally just a few hours. Well, we're now on to day three, and up until now, Jamie had been really quiet. But thankfully, he was able to turn it round that morning. Well, Jamie's had a bit of a hectic morning. You're a bit uh, down in the dumps yesterday, weren't you? Yep. Watching me all doing all that hauling. But uh, you've turned it round. Yep. You've obviously seen how it's done and changed <laughs> <laughs> changed your ways. But yeah, what have you had? You've uh, well, you've got one in the retainer there. You've got one in the retainer there. An absolute hippopotamus chunk in the net. One over there, one that you slipped back without without weighing because it, it wasn't a forty. I weighed it. Oh, you weighed it. It was thirty-seven. Oh, thirty-seven. Of it course, just, yeah. It just jumped back in. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> I was trying to make you sound good. Well, there you go. All right. Well done, mate. Is that your new PB? Fifty-four pound something. Fifty-four. Yeah, I think it was fifty-four. Well, with Jamie off the mark, 
I added once again to my tally that morning, the first of which was this absolutely incredible common. We'll take a look at this for an absolutely incredible looking creature. Oh, and look at that. <laughs> 56 pound, nine ounces. Oh, look at the length of that fish. Oh, what an incredible carp. <sighs> that would have been my PB as well at the start of this session. But look at the colors. A chestnut, mahogany, brown. <sighs> it's probably the best looking carp I've caught in ages. Just a few hours before I caught that fish, I'd actually been looking at photos of it on the, the photo board. And I said to Jamie and Judith, I'd absolutely love to catch that one. And there it was, laid in the bottom of my landing net. It's, um, it's certainly not your, your typical French fish. It reminds me a lot of the long common in Spitfire Pole. It's, it was absolutely magnificent. Just the length of it and the, the dark colors, like chestnut colors, it's, such an impressive fish and I'm never going to forget that one. Well it wasn't long after I slipped back that long common when two more fish followed in quick succession. The first of which was a, a mid 30 and that was followed by a 45 pound really chunky mirror. Well it's been a great morning for Jamie and myself. Jamie had five fish this morning including two 50s and a 60 and yeah I've had a couple myself with this one being the smallest of 45 pound, 11 ounces. Right, let's slip him back and get some breakfast. There you go, big one. That way, that way. Yeah. Well, I think it's about time I showed you the rigs and the baits that I've been using on this session. And the rig itself is very, very simple and it's quickly become my go-to rig of choice these days and that's the Ronnie rig. It's tied using a boom of 25 pound Fox Camatex Soft and that goes down to a size five edges, wide gape, long shank hook. It's a new pattern in the edges range. And so far, every fish I've hooked this session I have landed, it's got a 100% success rate. The hook bait, as you'd expect, is a washed out pink Carp Freaks pop-up. And this is all fished beneath a lead clip arrangement. It really is important in these weedy situations that you do drop the lead. You don't want anything that can act as an anchor point and hinder uh, landing the fish. So the lead will discharge on the take. It's a nice heavy lead, it's a five ounce lead that makes the lead easier to, to drop off and also improves the hooking properties of the rig also. But as soon as that fish picks up the hook bait, shakes its head, the lead will discharge. Usually in that situation, the fish comes to the surface and it just makes playing the fish a whole lot easier. The line I'm using there, I've got no tubing behind, behind there. I know people insist on, on using tubing to protect the fish's flanks, but what will happen in these weedy situations, as soon as the fish goes through a weed bed, the tubing will pop out of the tail rubber slide up the main line it will be no longer protecting the fish's flanks but what it will be doing is acting as an anchor point we talked about it with the lead it'll also be acting as an anchor point something else for the weeds to, to gather around and make landing the fish a lot more difficult now this rig has been fished in conjunction with the brand new test bait from cc moore I mentioned it in the last episode of Carp Life when I said that this bait is, is totally unique. It's not like anything else I've ever smelled before. It's like a, a creamy, meaty, spicy, fishy bait. I, I can't put my, my finger on the exact smell. 
it's it's not like anything I've ever smelled before in a carp bait, but what is clear, the fish absolutely love eating this. Now I've been using quite a lot of bait. I've been filling the bait boat up with a mixture of crumbs and whole boilies. I'm just about to send the boat out again, do another drop and hopefully put another fish on the bank. Well, we're now on to day four of this session. And once first light came, it was very much business as usual. That was just such a prolific feeding spell. You could literally set your watch by it. And once again, the average size of the fish was just insane. It's been a pretty good morning so far. Playing the fish right now. And just a short while ago, had two bites in quick succession. They're sat in the retainers down there, waiting to have their photographs done. Let's get this one in first. I kick things off with another 60 pounder, the third 60 pounder of the trip. Well, it's been another incredible morning. Three fish landed, this one being the biggest. Oh, 63 pound, two ounces third 60 of the session. Oh, how incredible is that? <laughs> that 60 pounder was quickly followed by a brace of 30s and they were quickly followed by a brace of 49 pounders. Just a crazy average size. A few ounces under 50 pound, really cool carp with them white tips to the tail and its fins. Oh, it's making my arm ache though. <laughs> Look at that. Absolute brute of a carp. Well, this is the fish that weeded me up this morning and I had to go out in the boat to, to free. So I just had to take to the boat. Fish has weeded me up. It is pretty weedy out there, but most of the fish I've hooked, I have been able to land from the bank, but this one's made a beeline for every weed bed possible. As soon as you get out on the boat, it just seems to ping free and, and come through it quite easily which this one seems to be doing at the moment. There we go. off now, isn't There he is. Come on, get in that net. Come on. Get in, get in, get in. Are you in? Are you in? Oh, you are now. Oh, yes. And there we go. Right. Let's get him back to the, back to the bank. Have a closer look at him. And when it went in the net, I thought I might, might scrape 40 pound that. Well, it was a bit bigger than I thought, because it actually weighs 49 pound, eight ounces. Another absolute chunk. My arms are getting tired. <laughs> so this is the Fox Frontier XD bivvy with the deluxe extension fitted. And that's where Mrs. Pitchers and I are going to be staying for the next week. I mean, the XD bivvy is already a very spacious bivvy, but with the addition of the extension, it practically doubles the size of the, the living space. So let's take a look inside. There's Mrs. Pictures, hard at work. So yeah, this is the porch slash office slash living room, I think. And... Uh, yeah, this has been a great working space for you. This is the 
XXL session table. So yeah, creates a good little good little office space. There's the bedroom, which we'll look at later. So yeah, got my bags all laid out down there, and you can see the extra extra floor space you've got. Crazy how much extra room there is. And if we go <laughs> into the bedroom, because there's two of us sharing a bivvy instead of a bed chair, we've got a just an inflatable inflatable air bed there with obviously some camo carpy blanket going on yeah really comfortable really comfortable we did used to share one bed chair <laughs> in the past but um mrs pictures has put on far too much weight since we got married and we can no longer fit in one sleeping bag or bed chair yeah, yeah. <laughs> well one of us has so <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? So yeah, that is our our hotel for the next few days. As you can see, absolutely loads of room, loads of space, really comfortable, great bit of kit. We're on to day five now and daylight came and brought with it another flurry of activity. This time a hat trick of fish weighing 35, 37 and 49 pounds. Well here's the first fish from this morning's hat trick. Quite a small one for this lake, 35 pound, 12 ounces. Proper chunky solid fish though. This is the third fish from this morning and at 49 pound, 9 ounces, he's the biggest. <laughs> He's a proper brute, look at him. <laughs> right, so I'm finally sorted after this morning's first light carnage. I had a take on the right hand rod. As soon as I picked up that rod, it was absolutely solid. It wasn't budging an inch. So I jumped in the boat, get out there, and I can see where my line goes in the water, there's just a massive raft of floating weed. And where that weed's drifted, it's also drifted around one of my other lines and tangled that rod as well. Um, so I'm out there trying to untangle this big mess of line and weed and I can feel the line in my hands pulling back so I know the fish is still on and as I'm trying to unravel it the fish pretty much pops up right next to the boat so I scoop that fish in the net weed line everything and while I'm trying to untangle this big mess of line and weed I can feel another line pulling back the line that it's tangled so I quickly bite off the line with the fish that's in the net and the one that's pulling back, I bite that off as well, tie both lines together with a back-to-back -back double grinner. And luckily, I was able to land that fish as well. So I've gone out there with one rod, but managed to land two fish on two different spots in the same net. So not a bad morning, really. We can see there, that's where I've had to back-to-back -back grinner the lines together. It doesn't look very... Very neat and fancy, but the lines are a right mess. All this was just in a, in a big ball, tangled around each other, tangled in the weed. But yeah, just where I managed to attach both lines together, I was able to land two fish on the same rod. Well, so far on this session, the only rod that I hadn't produced was Mrs. Pitcher's island rod. The fish just didn't want to be there. They wanted to be in and around that weed. So we had to make a change. And we brought that rod short and fished it just over the back of a really thick area of weed. And it didn't take long at all for that change to pay off. And here you are with a chunky mirror of 39.11, I think it was. So just shy of 40 pound, 18 kilos exactly in, in European money. That makes more sense to you, doesn't it? So yeah, well done, Mrs. Pictures. You did amazing with that one. Later that day, I was reacquainted with a, a familiar friend. Well, I've just unhooked this fish in the net and as nice as it is to catch a 56 pound common, it was only two days ago that I last caught it. It was the long common that I caught just a couple of days earlier. Obviously, having caught it before, there was no need to take the fish out of the water and re-weigh and re-photograph it. So I just carefully unhooked him in the landing net, 
and slipped him back. There he is. So I'm not gonna mess around with him at all. I'm not gonna take him out of the water. I'm just gonna slip him straight back. There you go, big fella. Off you go strongly. Going into day six now, and as first light came, so did the calf. Well, these fish are better than any alarm clock. It is seven o'clock, just before daybreak, and just like clockwork, I've had two bites really quickly. One sat in the net there. One quite a bit bigger sat in the net there and both these fish were caught by Mrs. Pitchers. Yes. Well done. <laughs> you did great. You did amazing. Great job. So yeah, be light in about 15 minutes, something like that. So we're just going to retain these for a, for a short while. Then we'll see you in a bit when it's light. But well, we haven't weighed any of these fish yet. So let's see what it is. What's your French PB, Mrs. Pitchers? Your French PB is 47, isn't it? Um, 22.5 kilo. Well, it certainly goes to show that moving Judith's rod away from the island, fishing close to the weed, was the right thing to do because in no time at all, she put carp on the bank, including a 50 pounder. I couldn't have been more proud of her. Oh, 55 pound. Look at the size of that. Oh yes. Well done. That's huge. He's been really well behaved as well. Yeah. That one's a bit smaller. But that's a really cool fish all the same. Really nice colours on him as well. Very, very autumnal looking carp, I think that one. Good job. Thank you. Right, do you want to slip that one back? He's cute. I like him. Oh, oh that was a quick one. Oh, I've got a great screenshot moment there. <laughs> <laughs> well moving into the next night we had a big low pressure system forecasted that was bringing with it mild wet windy almost stormy conditions and for the middle of november these were the best big fish conditions you could ever hope for if if there was one night this week that was going to do a big fish or do a special result i just felt like this had to be the time well, this is the penultimate night of this trip and conditions are absolutely perfect. We've got a big drop in pressure. The temperatures have really warmed up. It's windy, it's raining. It's just prime big fish conditions. I mean, there's lots of big fish in here, but this is like a classic big fish weather. So I've really gone for it on all the rods. I've kind of doubled the amount of bait that I've been using. I just think, something special is going to happen tonight i just got that feeling and if if there was ever a chance of putting one of them really big fish on the bank tonight has got to be it it's it's by far the best night of the week hopefully them really big fish are on the feet i'm saying really big fish like a 60 isn't big enough but you know there's fish to high 70s in here and it would be awesome if i could cap the trip off with one of them Okay, this feels and looks absolutely massive. Well, it's just after seven o'clock in the morning, so about 20 minutes before first light, and it's kicked off again, just like it did the same time yesterday. Had a double take. One sat in the net, out of shot. But I've just landed that. Look at the size of it. That's huge. 
I've never seen a fish that wide before. So there I am, just as dawn is breaking, looking down in the landing net at this baby whale sat there. And all the time I'm thinking it has to be one of the big ones. It has to be, it's massive. It's bigger than any fish I've ever seen on the bank, in the water. This, this must be a 70 pounder. So I'm trying to compose myself. I am literally shaking. So I've got the unhooking mat ready. I've got the weigh tripod ready. I've got the scales wet and zeroed to the sling. And now was the moment of truth. Okay, you ready? I am. Oh, Jesus, that's heavy. That's so heavy, that's so heavy. Oh my God! <laughs> no way! What's it draining down? 80. 84. Oh. 80. 80 pound three. I'll settle for it. Oh, it's gone down 80 pound two. 80 pound two. 80 pound two. Oh my God. <sighs> Sorry for shouting. Oh, no way. My head's just exploded. <sighs> I can't believe it. I, I said tonight, I said tonight something would happen with these conditions. And I knew it would be that rod, that's a crazy thing. I sent the bait boat out four times to that spot to pile a load of bait in, thinking it was just proper big fish weather. And that's the rod that's done it. I can't believe it. Oh my God. Right, let's get him in the water and we'll deal with him in a bit. It's almost like it'd be light in 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be light in 15, 20 minutes. We'll have a proper look at him then. <sighs> I've got what it weighed. Look at the size of that. 80 pound, two ounces. Oh. <laughs> Lake record, personal best. This has been the session of a lifetime. I don't think I'll ever, ever top this session as long as I live. Right. Time to say goodbye. I don't want to let her go. <laughs> One last look. Can I? Have I got the strength? Oh, look at that. <laughs> My arms have gone. My arms have totally gone. 80 pounds, two ounces. Off she goes. Look at the width of that fish. Look at that. <laughs> That's what an 80 pound calf looks like. Okay. Off you go. Look at that. Look at that. Smuggling. Look at the size of it. Well, I've just caught that. <laughs> now, although I just caught an 80 pounder, I still wanted more. And while we were waiting for it to get light enough to do the photos, I got the rods back out there. And that morning proved to be the most hectic of all. Well, the last time you saw me, I just slipped the net under that absolute whale. And while we were waiting for it to get light, to set the photos, I got the rods back out there and it's just kicked off. I've got another absolute chunk sat in this retainer. What's probably a 50 pounder in there that's probably a 40, and I think I've got another 40 pounder sat in the landing net that I just landed a few minutes ago. It's just absolute chaos, but good chaos. Well, this is a fish that kick-started the carnage. I haven't weighed this one, but it's probably around 36, 36, 37 pounds, something like that. Well, it kicked off royally this morning while we were waiting 
for it to get light enough to take photos. They're 80 pound, I got the rods back out there. And these two came as part of a, a double take. This smaller one here, that's a, a 43 plus. And one here a little bit bigger. That was a 51.7. <laughs> so yeah, not a bad double bubble. I went on to land fish of 20 pound, 30 pound, 40 pound, 50 pound, 60 pound. Well, after I caught that 80 pounder, I was waiting for it to get light to take the photos. I got the rods back out there. It's only in five minutes. And it rattled off with this one. It looks small in comparison, but that's 61 pounds, seven ounces. <laughs> and the 80 an absolutely insane morning's fishing that I don't think I'll ever top in my lifetime. That's a banger that mate, what's that one? 52, uh, 54 2. 54 2, love. didn't start great for me uh, the first 24 hours I was sat across the lake watching Mark get off to a flyer catching multiple fish very very quickly stuck it out uh, found some new spots got fishing effectively and turned into an absolutely incredible week I had 15 fish including four forties six fifties oh he's ever <laughs> topped off with a 63 pound mirror smash for pb multiple times absolutely unbelievable and to top it off to see mark catch that 80 pound fish was just unreal i managed to land four fish um the biggest one over 57 pound i was really really proud but more proud i was of my husband because of his 80 pound fish it was awesome to see a fish in this big size crazy so we've got another session booked here and I can't wait to come back. Well, I've been counting down the days for this session ever since we first booked it. I've had a few disastrous trips in the past to France and thankfully this wasn't one of them. This was one of them trips where for me, everything just went right pretty much from the word go. So I've ended up catching 25 fish for the week. I haven't done the tally of how many 40s and 50s there were. Topped off by new late record, new PB for the second time this session of 80 pound two ounces. Absolutely mind blowing experience. And to share it with Mrs. Pitchers and Jamie as well, just made it all the more memorable. One last look. Can I, have I got the strength? Oh, look at that. <laughs> My arms have gone. My arms have totally gone. 80 pounds, two ounces, off she goes. Look at the width of that fish. Look at that. <laughs> That's what an 80 pound calf looks like. It's an absolutely incredible venue. Thankfully, we've got a few sessions booked on here in the coming years, because I think this venue is probably going to be quite hard to get on in the future. So yeah, thankfully we've secured a few dates and I cannot wait to come back. I think after catching an 80 pounder, there's only one thing for it in there, really. <laughs> it's too big a deal for a bucket. You still get one anyway. <laughs> Hold off on the bucket. It's not even cold, I don't know why you're all Kicking up a big fuss is fine. Here we go! Mm -hmm. Nah, it's not even cold.
Well, just a couple of days after getting back from France and I was down at Orchid Lakes in Oxfordshire to film the Christmas special episode of The Challenge. How about that? Getting on for 37 pounds. I'm not gonna lie, I would have liked another couple of days to recover and prepare for this challenge, but I was still on a massive high and I was hoping my good luck would continue into this challenge. Now, historically, Orchid was known as home of the 30s and it always had a reputation as being a fantastic winter venue. Now, I'm not gonna give anything away for those of you that haven't seen the Christmas special episode yet, but what I will say is, it certainly lived up to both those reputations. <laughs> um, if you haven't seen it, head over to the Fox International YouTube channel and check out the video. As well as fishing and filming, I've also been really busy with my work for Capital Competitions. Now, in the last episode of Carp Life, I told you that we recently had our first birthday. Now, the competition that we ran for our one year anniversary was to win a VW Caddy. This was an awesome looking machine. It had been fully de-chromed, uh, color coded in stealth black, lowered, fitted with sport suspension. It looked amazing. Or the winner could choose a 15,000 pound cash alternative. And we did the draw and our winner, Simon, chose to take the cash. So we got to meet him and present him with a oversized check along with 15,000 pounds. So, this is Simon, and Simon won our big competition the other day to win either a VW Caddy or £15,000. And Simon has gone for the 15 grand, which I think just a few weeks before Christmas isn't a bad shout at all. Congratulations, mate. Cheers, mate. I'm absolutely buzzing for you. Yeah. Any idea what the 15 grand's gonna go on? Deposit to a mortgage. Deposit on a mortgage, wow. yeah, that's awesome. Well, congratulations again. Well done, enjoy it. Hi, I will. <laughs> well, done, mate. well, following on from the success of the VW Caddy competition, we really wanted to build on that momentum and put up even bigger and better prizes going forward. We've been looking at even more vans. And that's also allowed me to carry out another one of my personal interests, which is customizing vehicles. Recently, we took hold of a Ford Transit Custom and I was able to redesign the van to look exactly how I would want it to look if I was buying it. The van was originally white and we had it wrapped in a gorgeous satin gray wrap. We had the front splitter painted in gloss black. We had gloss black detailing done on the side panels, rear spoiler fitted. It looks absolutely incredible. And with it being a six seater conversion, it makes it the perfect fishing and family bus. It's competition time and you could win one of these brand new Fox Tackle Boxes absolutely free. It won't come as full as this, but we will also give you some Fox Edges Terminal Tackle too. And all you have to do to stand a chance of winning one of these great tackle boxes are these three, three, and all you need to do are three very simple things. First of all, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Secondly, follow the Capital Carp Competitions Facebook page because that is where the live draw takes place. And thirdly, answer this very simple question. What was the weight of the biggest fish I caught in France? Please make sure to do all those three things because last time we did a draw, the first one we picked out wasn't following the Capital Carp Competition's Facebook page and we had to do a redraw, so we do check. Now, 
Now before I go, I did say at the start of this programme that Judith and I have a really big announcement to make. And yeah, it's, it's really exciting times for both of us because our family is about to become a little bit bigger because Judith and I are having a puppy. When Judith first moved to the UK, she said she really wanted a puppy. And I'm like, oh, do we really have time for a puppy? But she wore me down. And to be honest, I think the deciding factor in me saying yes was that I get to name the puppy. And I'll announce that and also introduce you to the latest introduction to the Pictures household in the next episode of Carp Life. So I'll see you then. Okay, so this is the take, not the other two. In the last episode of Carp Life, I told you that we just had our... That's really loud, isn't it? Quite loud, actually. <laughs> and our winner... Simon. Sam... <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear it buzzing? Yeah. Recently, we took hold of a Ford Transit Custom and I was able to redesign the... Oh, fuck's sake. Recently, we took hold of a Ford Transit Custom. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. And because it's a six-seater conversion, it makes an absolutely perfect fishing or family car bus. Bam. Now, what I... What did I just say? <laughs> How do I say this? I'll try this again. It's obviously a very prolific spat. Although the lake... Although the lake... Fucking hell. Going into day six now, and as... First light, <laughs> thing I like to say. Well, it certainly go to show. Go to show? Certainly went, certainly goes to show. It certainly lived up to its winter form reputation.